New Year's resolutions suck. So in this episode, I'm going to share with you how to make New Year's resolutions like a millionaire in this episode of the Seven Figure Squad happening in three, two, one. Let's go. What's cracking, everybody? My name's Smart Guy Matt Sapali here, hailing to you from Oak Brook Terrace, Illinois, a direct west suburb of downtown Chicago. And my friends, Vlogmas 2020 is over. Happy belated Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays, and Happy Pre, Happy New Year. Uh, but listen, man, Vlogmas 2020 was a very, very, very successful campaign for the Seven Fear Squad. We got to meet a lot of new people. We got to meet you. We got to establish a lot of new friendships, got to establish a lot of new people that we never thought we'd reach before. We reached some people in the Philippines. We reached some people in, in Bulgaria, Romania. We reached people in, in, in the uh, Caribbean islands. We reached people all over the United States of America. I just want to say thank you as we start this episode, as we begin a new year. Thank you for supporting the Seven Figures Movement to think like a millionaire, to strategize like a millionaire, so therefore you could become a first-generation cash flow millionaire. And by the way, Vlogmas 2020, it was quite... The exercise. I mean, every day our team here got together and every day we committed to one new episode a day for 24 days straight. I traveled to three different cities and states during December during this whole Vlogmas episode, but we found somehow some way to get it done. We flexed the new muscle. We found something that we thought we'd never do before. And it's just a testament to say, you know what? If we decide to do something, we want to be impeccable with our world. We're going to follow through. We say we follow through. And guess what? Our confidence is higher. We've reached many of you and look forward to continuing this movement as we come along here in 2021. So with that being said, we want to help you make the next year coming through a financial breakthrough coming ahead post pandemic, post vaccine. And we want to make sure we do everything in our part to help you gather the tools necessary, the insight necessary, the mindset necessary to help you make sure that 2021 for you potentially could be the year, the last year you ever, ever worry about money again. Now, I realize that you can't do that on your own, so that's why I'm here to help. Did you know that according to Forbes magazine, over 80% of New Year's resolutions fail within the first month? I mean, the old joke is what? Don't go to the gym at the beginning of the year. Go to the gym starting March, because all the people that said, I want to get in shape, I want to get on a special diet, I want to fit in this dress, I'm going to look like this on the beach. Guys and gals, quit by the time February rolls around. It's now available for you to go back into the gym and have your machines back because all the people quit 30, 60 days later after the new year begins. And why is that? Why are people doing that? Well, here's why 99% of people do it wrong. Here's a system that we've developed over the years to make sure that we're helping you track and make sure you meet your goals in a particular year. And just wanna let you guys know, 2020 was a very, very, very trying year for many of us. And thank God, you know, we weren't in line for the stimulus checks and thank God we weren't in line for the PPP loan because we financially prepared and got ahead of things, anticipated things because we've been through something, not necessarily a pandemic, but we've been through something that financially rocked us before and the type of person that goes through some pain, you're gonna, you're gonna realize really quickly, man, I never wanna go through this situation ever again. And I think many of you are starting to think that way too as well. So as you begin this year of 2021, and I, by the way, the recording of this video, it's before January 1st and I hope that you're not waiting for January 1st to start your plan to have a financial breakthrough. Matter of fact, you start January 1st, you're already behind the power curve. Why? Because I want you to make sure you're clear about what you want. If you're not clear, by the way, if you're not clear about what you want in 2021, if you're not clear about what you want in your life, none of this matters. So you got to go through the exercise. What do I want? It's like notebook, right? What do you want? I don't know. It's not that simple. What it's do you want? What do you want? You see what I'm talking about? So you have to be clear about what you want. Yes, things may be written on the menu, things may be written down for you, but unless you're clear about what you want and why you want it, what you're going to do when you get there and how you're going to get there, these are serious questions you need to ask yourself. And now, maybe you've seen some of my episodes before, but we talked about these different things, about clarity, by making sure why, what, and how. But if you look at three different things here, let me get right into it. So you look at three, it's called my three by three plan. Okay, in terms of goal setting, New Year's resolution, it isn't just something like, oh, I'm just gonna get in shape, or I'm gonna look a certain way, or, or, or I'm gonna uh, uh, have a financial breakthrough, or uh, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna be financially independent. No, those are what we call fat words, right? There's no definition to it, it's too loose. We need specifics. So we're talking about a goal. There's three different types of goals. A selfish goal, 
an emotional goal and a stability goal. Let me explain. Selfish goal, it's okay to be selfish. It's okay, listen, <laughs> there needs to be a period of time where you actually want for yourself. Now, this affects a lot of people out there. It says, you know, man, I really want to serve other people. I want to give other people, you know. You know, God didn't bless me to have it for myself. And, and I, I need to make sure I bless other people. Yes, I understand. God bless you for thinking that way. But at the same time, too, as well, you can't give what you ain't got. If you're not financially happy, if you're not financially set, you don't have the material possessions necessary to hand it out, what are you giving? You're giving people hope. Hope for what? It needs to translate into something tangible, something practical. You know, sometimes people say, well, man, you need to store up your riches in heaven. Cool, I understand you. You definitely need to store up your riches in heaven. In the meantime, do I have a withdrawal card, an ATM card for my riches in heaven so I can pay my bills on earth? You know, we have a saying here, don't be so heavenly minded that you're not any earthly good. So it's okay to be specific. So therefore you can bring in and help yourself. So therefore you can be a bigger blessing to other people. It's okay. And by the way, Matt, what's it like? So it's okay to have a Ferrari? It's okay to have five, $10 million house? Yes. Why not? You know why? You, do you know why they build $10 million homes? Do you know why they create luxury and exotic cars? Do you know why? Because people buy them. And Matt, well, it's, it's, is it practical? Why not? Of course it's practical. Listen, there's no problem with you buying a Rolls Royce or Ferrari having a five, $10 million home if you have the financial means and financial wherewithal that actually purchasing them is like buying a cheeseburger. I shared a video here how I bought a Rolls Royce at 30 cents on the dollar. Check out this video right here. How I bought a Rolls Royce for 30 cents on the dollar because it's not what I bought, it's how you buy it. But in the meantime, be specific. Ah, I'm, getting your, I'm getting your wheels to start thinking now. Ah, good. You got to be selfish for a minute, so therefore you can give more later on down the road. Emotional. What's an emotional goal? I want to retire my parents. I want to be debt free. I want to stop worrying about income. I want to stop worrying about my bills. I really want to make sure I have an impact in my community. I can't tell how many times people come into my office. Their tears are falling. I want to take care of my kids. I want to take care of my community. Awesome. And next thing you know, a week later, two weeks later, a month later, they quit. They quit up on themselves. They quit on their dreams. And they go back to their... 10, 15, 20 dollar hour job, which is which is no disrespect to them, but your goals and dreams of having a community center about retiring your parents. My good friend John Mason, let's show a picture of him here. John Mason talks about stem cell in his knees because he's had multiple knee surgeries. And guess what? He just paid for stem cells for his father who's got knee uh, issues because we were traveling in Greece a couple years ago and his dad couldn't enjoy Greece because they're getting off the cruise ship, back on the cruise ship in, 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 in this restaurant, out of this restaurant, but he was having knee issues. He couldn't enjoy Greece. He couldn't enjoy uh, Croatia. He couldn't enjoy Venice, Italy. Why? Because of his knees. And what did John do? He created a goal. He said, listen, I'm going to make sure my dad has best quality health care and treatment. He helped. First of all, he paid off his parents' debt. Check out this video of John Mason helping his parents pay off debt. And next thing you know, he gets quality treatment. Why? Because it's part of his goal. It's part of his selfish goal. It's part of his emotional goal. Third, last but not least, stability. What am I talking about stability? I need to make sure that I am rising above this pandemic. I'm rising above layoffs. I'm rising above the industries that are being impacted the most because of this recession, pandemic, political environment, whatever you want to call it, regulation. I want to make sure I make $100,000 income, a $1 million dollars income as an entrepreneur by myself outside of my current job or career, even if I shifted careers. I've got calls right now here in 45 minutes of people. I got 10 people I make phone calls because they're reaching out to me on Instagram. They're reaching out to me on Facebook saying, hey, listen, I want to change my industry because it's not stable. And guess what is stable to them? Their bills. They got stable bills, stable student loan payments, stable rent payments, stable mortgage payment. I think uh, before the, uh, the stimulus plan was signed a couple days ago by Trump, that 90 some million people had not paid their rent and then he needed to sign the stimulus plan to make sure they extended uh, federal uh, uh, coverage to make sure they can still be in their apartment or their, their, their place without getting kicked out by the landlord. That's not being stable. That's being hopeful. And the moment you allow somebody else to control your finance and control your situation, you will continue to be in anxiety. You're anxious about your situation. You're going to be worrying about your situation because you don't control it. So some of you that might feel stable, make $100,000 income and have $20,000 a year in expenses. Some of you feel more comfortable than $1 million of income and you have $100,000, $200,000 of expenses. You have $800,000 of cushion. 
You see what I'm talking about? How would it feel in 2021 to know that if you have all these things in place, that you're paying your bills ahead of time? Wouldn't it be awesome? Like it's January or February and you have all your bills paid all up until the summertime. Or it's the springtime, you get some of these things in place that all your bills of 2021 are paid for by the second quarter. That by the end of June, all your bills of 2021 are paid for and then you're ahead in 2022. Wouldn't it be awesome? Well, that could be a reality because money is just a tool. Money is just going to be a tool to help you get to the next level of your life. Okay, now, that being said, these are three goals. Now, here's what you have to have in addition to these goals. These goals have to be specific. These things have to have a deadline and they have to have a certain cost that you are willing to pay. You got to have some skin in the game. So let's, let's break that down right quick. Let's say you want a Ferrari 458 Italia, red, yellow stripe, uh, specific rims. Uh, some, some of my guys want a G-Wagon. And Matt, when I buy this G-Wagon, I want to make sure I install a coffee cup holder because certain G-Wagons, uh, depending on the year, don't have a coffee cup holder. They're already thinking about the coffee mug they're going to be putting in a G-Wagon and they're going to install a kit to allow them to have a coffee, uh, coffee cup holder there inside the G-Wagon because currently right now it doesn't have one. I think the new model does, but the older models don't. Um, I want a mansion. What type of mansion? How many fireplaces? How many bedrooms? How many bathrooms? Uh, when people walk in, do you have chandeliers? What type of furniture are you going to have? What type of, uh, what type of paintings? What type of artwork? Are you going to have a grand piano, baby grand piano? Is it, is it by Baldwin? Is it by Yamaha? Right? What type of sound system are you going to have? Are you going to hire somebody that's going to install an in-home theater system where first, second floor, third floor, it's all connected by a Sonos app, Things are, things are squared away like that. Man, I'm just talking. How would you like to have a home office? Would you like to buy a mansion? Is a home office in there, and you sit in there, freaking leather, leather seats, like a mahogany furniture, just bookcases to your left and to your right. Is it that detailed? What type of books are you going to have up there? What type, of, what type of material are you going to have books looking at you for reference to build your multi-million dollar dreams? Are you specific that way? You go on a vacation. Is it going to be an all-inclusive vacation? Oh, I'm just going to go to Cancun. I'm just going to go to Coast Three. I'm just going to go to Hawaii. Okay, that's not specific enough. What resort are you staying at? What's the current cost for staying there for a family of five? What about the activities? Uh, uh, you want to go to Maui? You want to go to Maui? Great. Do you know what the tour is? Go to go to the Molokani Crater. When my son and I went there on his 13th birthday, went to the Molokani Crater, swimming in the sea turtles, snorkeling, seeing a, a, a black fin, uh, we got black tip shark, baby black tip shark at the bottom of the reef. And next thing you know, we're swimming, we're swimming past the back of the Molokani Crater. Next thing you know, a, a 200 foot drop. Boom! Just goes right over. You're like, whoa, I'm backing up, I'm backing up. Right, those are some of the specifics you need to enjoy. And by the way, YouTube allows you to be even more specific to live the things that you want to experience through YouTube in the time being as you're not there yet, but you're going to get more specific and detailed about those type of things. It's going to allow you to enjoy that moment. We're taking our guys here in June, July here to Bora Bora. Everybody's going to have their own hut, it's butler services, eating seafood, sushi. Is it going to be bluefin tuna? Is it going to be irregular tuna? But it's going to be bluefin. I love bluefin tuna. It's going to have the little gold flakes on it. <laughs> see, see how exciting that is? We crank on the dream machine. The problem with most people, when they talk about their New Year's resolutions, they don't crank on the dream machine to its full capacity. It's using fat words, words that have no meaning. What's it going to be like when you pay off your mom and dad's debt? What's it going to be like for you to have zero student loan debt? What's it going to be like for you to have zero credit card debt? What's it going to be like? What's the feeling like? What type of burning part are you going to have for all your bills? Put all the envelopes. You put all the uh, 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 correspondence from your student, student loans. Uh, your correspondence from your credit card bills. You're going to have a, a fireplace there, a burn pit outside. You can throw everything in there because you're debt free now. It's burn pit party for your debt. How's that going to feel like? Who are you going to invite to that party? Are you casting that vision to your friends and family? Are going to invite to that party right now? Are you doing that? Are you declaring your intentions? Are you being specific about it? You know why? Because what you talk about, you be about. What you're more likely to do is the things that you're more likely to cast out and say because your subconscious mind hears it. Every time I do role play with my guys in terms of goal setting, you know what I want them to do? I want them to say it. I want them to say it out loud. I used to say for years before I started making a million bucks, my, one, of my, one of my first uh, mentors was Vietnamese. And you have to have, he had, had this Vietnamese, uh, his Vietnamese accent. Where's my cell phone real quick? He, 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 used, he used to pull out his phone. He says, this phone. Will it make me a million dollar? <laughs> that, was, that was his accent. So guess what I started picking up when I left the military and being mentored initially by this Vietnamese uh, gentleman, this G Vietnamese entrepreneur. I used to pull out my phone. I'm not Vietnamese, but I, meant, I did it in his accent. I said, this phone will make me a million dollar. And guess what? It did. 
Because they kept saying it over and over and over and over again in spite of the setbacks, in spite of the disappointments. And you'll face a lot of them when you resolve. That's what, that's what resolutions come from. It comes to the root word resolve. When you resolve that you want to be a different person, guess what? And you're specific about it, and you want to be selfish and emotional, you have a certain stability goal about it, and now you're going to have a deadline. When? Specifics. When? Is it in the first quarter? In the, in the third quarter? Is it end of 2021? And by the way, my recommendation, do it quick, early. First 30 days of January, I want to lose 5, 10 pounds. Second uh, uh, second month of February, I'm going to lose 10, 15, 20 pounds, right? Uh, fellas, you want to increase your bench? Hey, listen, at the end of January 20, uh, 2021, I want to increase my bench by 25 pounds. Then you get more specific. How often am I going to be at the gym? Two, three times a week? Four times a week? Am I going to be doing cardio the days I'm not working out? Is it specific? I, I, I'm going to be eating carbs? No carbs? What type of protein am I drinking? Is it going to be isolate protein? Is it going to be whey protein? What is your specific dead? Now, they got specifics. When is the deadline? Guess what happens now in February? Guess what everybody's doing right now? They have a reason to want to get in shape because they want to look good in the beach, on the beach in Hawaii. They want to make sure they hit the, the board shorts. They want to hit the bikinis and looking good. In February. Or not. Depends on what they want to do. But if they want to look good and they have this as a specific deadline that we're going to be in Hawaii in February, they're going to make sure they take care of the diet. To make sure they exercise because they got specific about it. They have a deadline. Now, the third part about this, what's the cost? Okay, you want to look a certain way? Ladies, have, pull out a dress. Put it somewhere it's visible. You're seeing that dress. Uh, uh, I'm a size whatever, size 2, size 4, size 6. I don't know what it is. I, I just hear my wife saying that all the time, okay? Whatever. Ladies, you know what I'm talking about. I'm a size 8 and a size 10. I don't know if that's good or bad, whatever. Whatever, whatever size dress you want to fit in. Hang it out. There's a dress you maybe used to fit in. Hang it out. Okay? Awesome. Fellas, what we used to do all the time, pick, guys, we're very visual. Put the, put the pictures of what you want to accomplish. Specifics. Boom. Now, what's the price you're willing to pay? Are you, are you willing to, are you willing to uh, save every scratch, every bit of dollars to get to your financial goal? Are you going to make sure there's no frivolous spending in the first 30 days of, of, uh, in January of 2021? And more importantly now, as you go back to here, what are you willing to do and how are you going to get there to these goals and dreams that you have? Because now that you're specific about it, now that you have a deadline about it, now what is the price you're willing to pay? The other part of this, right? A lot of emotional goals. Sometimes people want these goals, but they're not willing to invest any time away from their old habits. If you want new money in 2021, you have to have new habits. You can't make new money with old habits. I'm sorry. Those old habits, you got to drop them in 2020. The sad part about 2020 is this. If you needed time to develop a skill, if you needed time to figure out what you want, if you needed time to find out what you stood for, you had all of 2020 to figure it out. If you didn't figure out what that was, if you didn't pick up a new skill in 2020, guess what? It's not like you didn't have time. Guess what you, guess what you realize now? You just lack the discipline. So guess what you need now in your life if you, did, if you didn't have discipline? There's a cost for you not knowing what you want. There's a cost for you not being disciplined to get to where you want to go. Here's why. You say you want to do something, you don't follow through, you don't get it. Guess what happens to your confidence? Guess what happens to your self-image, right? Your self-worth, it starts to take a dip. It starts to take a hit. You know why? Because you get losses, 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 losses. You know what happens when you start having wins, 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 wins. Those magnify. And guess what? You want to get high? Let's get high, yo. Let's get high. Let's get high. You know what the best high is? It's not the dispensary two blocks up the street that just opened up. It's not what you can put in your veins. It's not what you can smoke. It's not what you can drink. The best high is winning. The best high is accomplishing and reaching these goals. Part of your, probably the process of you doing this is manifest what's going to feel like when you hit these certain goals. What are you going to say? Who are you going to call? Who's your first phone call? I've been telling my guys all the time. I remember when I was coming up and I wanted an AMG. Okay, we purchased a uh, AMG SL550. Uh, they called it the Batmobile. Okay, and I remember telling my guys, because I didn't know what the Mercedes Benz, you know, when, you know, the whole AMG engine, you know, AMG, the whole, the whole model AMG. I didn't know what AMG, I still don't know what AMG stands for. But I created a definition in my mind of how I was going to feel once I get this AMG delivered to my office. And to make a long story short, I know the cost. And I remember that Mercedes-Benz, back to the Mercedes-Benz. 
I remember figuring out what AMG stands for because I told my guys, you know what AMG stands for? What does it stand for, Matt? What does it stand for? When I'm in my Mercedes Benz, I call you on my phone. You'll know I'm driving my AMG. How do you know, man? How, how do we know you're driving your AMG? Because here's how it sounds. Yo, Victor. Yo, Rudy. Yo, Suazo. Yo, Hansberry. What? What? Matt, tell them what AMG stands for. AMG, you know what AMG stands for? <laughs> oh my God! I knew exactly how I was going to feel and how I was going to call my boys when I picked up this AMG. And what a phenomenal experience that was. And so, when you think about the cost, think about your negotiation with family. Say, honey, I want to accomplish this in 2021. Babe, husband, you got to negotiate with the family. They got to buy into it too as well. I remember telling the kids, hey kids, you want to go to Hawaii? All right? You want to go to this spot? You want to go to this spot? You want... Listen, you do your part, I'm going to do my part. It's part of negotiations. Maybe you need to eat in more, buy the groceries, you need to learn how to cook, maybe you need to do that more often if it's more eco uh, economical for you. You need to stick with inside a certain budget. And for some of you guys, you binge watch too much on Netflix, you binge watch too much on YouTube, you binge watch too much on, on Amazon, whatever online video service, TV service that you do use. But if you're going to watch TV, here's, here's my negotiation with myself. I'm only going to watch TV if it's research, if it's understanding a certain topic, if it's a documentary. Then I'll watch TV. Outside of that, I don't need to be in a novel. I don't, I don't need to be in a, in a series that talks about vampires and all that crap, right? I need to do research. I don't, I don't need to be involved in some other, other person's life. I need to be involved in my life. And if I'm going to be watching TV, it's because I'm getting my game better. Part of that cost too as well. What type of licenses do you need? What type of education do you need? What type of skills do you need to acquire? What type of training do you need? What type of events and conferences? We got a conference coming up in February in Louisville, Kentucky. We're fired up about this conference. And guess what? At this conference, we're putting guys in, the, in this conference that are speakers. They're going to skill up those who attend. For this side of our company, this region that we're hosting it, they're going to be skilling up and raising their game in terms of understanding financial services, understanding entrepreneurship, understanding the language of business. These are the type of things that we are doing for our people to make sure that their game, their goals are being reached to as well. And that's something... Regardless of what you're doing, if you want to up your game in 2021, that's what you have to do to accomplish your goals. You got to be specific about it. You have to have the deadline. You have to have a certain cost and make sure these all are included in your resolution, in your goal planning, goal setting for 2021. So that being said, I hope you gained a lot of value from our Seven Figure Squad Vlogmas series. So we told you we're going to have some announcements here. So one of the things we discovered through Vlogmas 2020 is that many of you love the biblical breakdowns of scripture to empower you to say it's okay to be successful, it's okay to be rich, it's okay to be prosperous, it's okay to be happy if it's for his use and will and his glory. So uh, listen, help me with the series, but the, the title we came up is on Sundays, we're going to have a biblical baller breakdown. I don't know, I'm just, let me know in the comment section below what type of series you like to title that, but we're going to be unpacking scripture to help empower you to see how God sees money, how God sees your success, how God sees prosperous, uh, prosperity and happiness for you. Uh, so therefore you can lock the talents and gifts that you knew you were blessed with. We're going to continue those on Sundays. And in addition to that, you can expect three to four episodes a week. We're going to promise you to help you understand how to think like a million, how to strategize like a, like a millionaire. So therefore you can become a first generation cash flow millionaire in 2021. And the last but not least, uh, we're looking forward to this big recap video of the seven figure squad in its entirety for all the episodes we uploaded in 2020, that's going to be released here on New Year's Eve, December 31st, and Ivan's working on that right now, so we're looking forward to that. That's coming soon. But with that being said, guys, if you're watching this on Facebook, if you're watching this on YouTube, drop your thoughts, your comments in the comment section below. Make sure you click like and follow our business page, Money Smart Guy. Uh, if you're following this on YouTube, make sure you click subscribe and hit notification to be alerted the next time we upload our next episode. So this is most likely my last episode and video of 2020. I just want to let you know, I thank you for your support. I thank you for your feedback. I thank you for your good feedback, your bad feedback. It's all, it's all love. We're all growing together. I'm, no, I'm, I'm nowhere near perfect. Uh, thank you for not judging me. I promise I won't judge you. We're all growing together. And uh, listen, I want you to know that becoming a first generation cash flow millionaire is not out of reach. If it can happen to a kid like me with no last, no credible last name, uh, no inheritance, you know, no, no political advantage, no educational advantage, you know, no, no, um, no pedigree. If I can figure out this money game, well, guess what? You can too. So that being said, guys, let's wrap this up until we meet again. Continue to live smart. Continue to love smart. And be money smart today. Bye-bye.